I've been with the uh, Shawnee Fire Department for my 18th year now. Um, so as a fire marshal, there's a couple different jobs I do. Uh, one is fire investigation, so any time a uh, fire occurs within our city, uh, it's my job to go out and find out what happened. Was it either an accident or did someone start this fire? Then if it determined that someone set that fire, then we go uh, work with the police department and try and track that person down. Another part of my job is public education. One of the things I love about my job is being able to come out here, be given the opportunity to come out here and speak to you guys about something that's as close to me and that's child care. Um, you guys are far from babysitters. You guys are a professional group. Can you take care of the, one of the most precious commodities we have in our community? And that's children. Not only children, but other people's children too. So as a fire department, I have a responsibility um, to those parents and to you to make sure that I come um, every year and inspect your home. And it's good for the, your business, but then also for your own family too, after daycare hours. So it's good to have that in there. Um, a couple of things that have changed. We used to follow the Kansas State Fire Marshal's Office uh, regulations. Those have changed, so I got all the fire marshals together. We all got together, and we came up with our own handbook. So it would be the Johnson County, Kansas Home Daycare Handbook, 2013 edition. Every city in the county participates in this now. So I believe you guys must, everyone has handouts. So we're gonna kinda go over this a little bit. We're gonna talk a little bit about fire safety, some things that we look for. Uh, one of the big changes in here is the state only said that the fire department had to come out once for the life of your child care. One time. So if you're in operation for 20 years, you only have one visit. We got together so that's not safe. That's not right. So now, everyone, every city will do it, an annual inspection, which is big because Olathe, they didn't have the staff, they only had one person that had come out once, once for the life of your child care. So I really applaud Olathe for stepping up and saying, uh, we're coming out every year now. So that's a little bit more safe for you. Um, we'll go over this and you also have an inspection checklist. We'll go over that for you too. One of the big things is that we don't allow child care in apartment complexes. Does anybody know why? Big group, good Monday. It's because there's so many people under one roof that I can't inspect every single apartment. I can inspect yours, but I don't know about your neighbors. And it's an exiting issue also. If you're up on the third floor, you can't have child care. And you really only have one way out. So we don't allow child care in apartment complexes. That has to be a one or two family dwelling, which is a duplex or a, or a single family home. Other part of that is what level of your home is approved. That's always been a big question, so we help simplify that. We always got the question, well, I live in a split level, or every home's different. So now if it's more than 12 feet above the plane, grade, the ground, that's considered a second floor. So it helps simplify it. So if you're measured from the ground up 12 feet and more, that's considered a second floor. So that kind of helps alleviate some of the split level um, discussions we had. Now, one of the big things is exiting for me in, in the fire service, is exiting from the, your main floor. You have to have two ways out. Why do I want two ways out of your home? Right, in case one's blocked. So if I have my front door, but I have a living room that's on fire here, I can't make that. So I need to go out through my back door, through a secondary exit, okay? Primary and secondary exits is what we need to have. And I want you to practice those primary and secondary exits. One month, use the primary. Next month, use your secondary. You have to have a fire drill every month. And it starts to become redundant. So vary it up. Pretend there's a fire in the kitchen. Where, what would you do? This is training for you, but also some of the other kids. I want them to be able to take you by the hand and go, no, we got to go this way. We do this all the time. It helps alleviate some of their fears. If they actually hear the smoke alarm, you have to push the button on the smoke alarm once a month and check it and document it. I want those kids to get used to hearing that sound. If they've never heard that, they will get scared and panic and run. So make sure they get used to hearing that sound. So primary, your first floor, primary and secondary exits. Second floor, here's where it gets tricky. Your primary exit will be your staircase. So if you have a child sleeping on the second floor, your primary exit is going to be your front door going down the stairs. The state changed the regulations for your secondary exit. It used to be a window, 5.7 square feet. The total open is the fire escape window. That led to a deck with stairs laying down. Or 
a door that led to a deck that walked down. Now the state said that you only have to have that fire escape window, 5.7 square feet total openness. When you measure, when you open it, that's the part that you measure, 821 inches. But you don't have to have a deck or stairs leading down. That window is meant for you to stay right there away from us. How many here think that's safe? Huh. How many here think that they will have a phone available to call us? You won't. The only time we'll know is when there's fire coming out the window. Someone call us. We feel that's very unsafe. We don't. So when you want to use the second floor, you will get every fire marshal to talk to you about it, about your decision on that, because it's dangerous. You are meant to sit there and wait for the kids, for us. Average survival time in a fire is three minutes. It used to be four, now it's three. Fires are growing faster and hotter than they did even 10 years ago. What's the average response time for a uh, fire department in Johnson County? From door to door, hold on. Five, seven minutes. Five, seven minutes, good. Four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes. So we're we're racing the clock. Three minutes. We're there four and a half. We're late. Pardon me. To do a successful rescue, we're late. The TV and movies don't do not do us any favors by showing us running in there and grabbing everybody. The chances of us doing a successful rescue is almost zero. Almost zero. What do we have in our homes that could help get you out? Smoke alarms. Smoke alarms. Because remember, we're racing clock on that three minutes. So I need a smoke alarm in every level of your home, wherever a child would sleep. The new part of this is that before it just had to be a battery operated smoke alarm. We want interconnected smoke alarms now. That is the new requirement for any new home daycare. So let me kind of explain how this works. If I had a fire right here, where's that smoke going to go? Up, right? Like a hot air balloon. Heat rises, smoke goes up. Smoke is the one that kills people, not the fire. Smoke, carbon monoxide. A lot of different uh, chemicals in smoke. One's carbon monoxide that displaces oxygen in your red blood cells. So now you're not getting oxygen to your brain, heart, or limbs. The next is a hydrogen cyanide, which is a nerve agent. So if you breathe that in, you're, you're not getting the, the messages to your arms and legs to move, to get out. So smoke is what kills people. So smoke goes up into a smoke alarm. In the smoke alarm, you'll see uh, in that purple handout, uh, smoke alarm has little uh, vents inside of it. So when smoke enters that chamber, there's a light bulb with a mirror inside that smoke alarm. Smoke enters that, breaks that light, so the light's no longer talking to the mirror, and it sounds an alarm. What it, that's how a battery operated one would work. Smoke goes up, activates. You have to wait for the smoke to travel upstairs, activate those. Interconnected ones save a lot of lives in, in, in the United States, and especially in this county, especially in my city, in the city of Shawnee. If we have a fire in the basement, that smoke alarm activates, it sounds all the smoke alarms in the home to get you out. Remember, work three minutes to get out. Three minutes is first ignition. First little bit of smoke to get out. Three minutes. So their new requirement is they have to be interconnected. Most newer homes from 92 on have interconnected smoke alarms. There's a new technology out that, that uh, fire marshals of Johnson County grabbed onto and said, this is what we believe in, this is what we want to use. It's wireless interconnected smoke alarms. So if you have a home that doesn't have them, interconnected smoke alarms, you do not have to hire an electrician. You don't have to pull a build, building permit. You can go to Lowe's or Home Depot, Westlake, wherever you like, and get these that uh, inter wireless interconnected. So you put them up like regular smoke alarm, but when they activate, it sends a radio signal to the other alarms to activate. Let's everyone in the home know right away to get out. And so how much do those cost? Well, they vary. Um, what I would do is look on the internet and do some searches. You can find them a little bit cheaper. Right now, they're running about $25 to $30 a piece. Uh, absolutely. We're getting a lot of homes that are just going ahead and doing it on their own, not even childcare. People know about this technology, they're doing it on their own. So we're really trying to promote it, and you guys would help us with that. I think we can really lessen the, the dangers to people. We let people know about this technology. So, you want to use your second floor, you have to have an interconnected smoke alarm, either wire or wireless. Remember what I said about that second floor. When you're racing that clock, and you're supposed to have all these kids by that window wait for us. We're late by the time we get there, folks. And that's if that truck's at the fire station. What if we're at another house fire? What if we're at a car wreck? You're looking at six to eight minutes now before we get anybody out to your house. 
and ask for him to call 911 call. That fire might have been going for a while. So just realize that when you, when you uh, decide to use the second floor. Basement requirement, same thing. It could either be a walkout, a door leading out, which is good, or that fire escape window. It's 5.7 square feet of total openness when you open it up. That's the part that you measure, the open part. And it can't be more than 44 inches off the ground. Why do I not want it more than 44 inches off the ground? Kids have to climb out. Remember, where's heat and smoke go? Do I want you climbing up in that, that hostile environment? No, I want you as low as I can get you to get out. So another part of the, the new requirements is we will witness fire drills every year. And we will, we will test you. It's called an acceptance test. If you want to use the basement, you have that window. Before we can approve it, we have to, you have to demonstrate that you can get the kids out of that window within the four minute time limit of your fire drill. This isn't, if you fail, we're gonna help you. We're here to help you. I'll, we'll bring a fire crew with us if you want. We can really do this like a real scenario. We'll bring fire trucks out there, we'll, we'll help you out. But before I can approve you on for that basement, you have to be able to show you can get the kids out. Second floor, if you want to use the second floor, you have to show me that you know how to operate that window and you get it open. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Fire needs three things to survive. Heat, fuel, and air. Heat, fuel, and air. So I take away one of those, the fire will go out. If I open up this window on the second floor, what happens? What am I letting inside your home? Air. Right. What do you think that fire is going to do? Come towards the air. Go right to it. You have to be aware that second floor really, really makes us nervous. Really makes us nervous. But it was kind of give and take. Give and take. So at least we got interconnected smoke alarms in there. Does that make sense to everybody? Anybody have any questions so far? Yes, ma'am. If you just have a single floor, you still need to interconnect it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, single floor. The question was, what if I'm on a single floor, like a ramp style home? Do I need to interconnect? And yes. Because I, that fire is still going to grow fast. But I want all the, the bedrooms to activate. This is good for your own family, too. After daycare hours, this is, is great for your own family and your own children, too. One of the things that, does anybody have any questions about the levels of the home and, and exiting? Can you use ladders? No. The, the question was, can you use ladders? And the reason we don't is because in the 18 years I've been in the fire service, all the ladders I've seen have been still in the box underneath the bed. Mm -hmm. They just don't work. If you put them on the windowsill wrong, you'll fall off. And a lot of the ladders have the rungs right up against the house, so you're on your tiptoes. Yeah, I wouldn't use it. So we just say, no, I want you down by that window. Let's say you can't get out. I want you down as low as you can go by that window. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about once we're out. You have to have a meeting place, somewhere where you know to go. Do I want you in the back of the home? No. You exit through the back, I want you to come up to the front, street side. Get to know your neighbors. What if it's bad weather? What if it's raining, snowing? We've got a shelter these kids somewhere, so I want you at a neighbor's house. So get to know your neighbors. Let them know, hey, I'm running a daycare. In case of an emergency, can we use your home? We can put the kids there, call 911 from there. Okay? The reason I don't want you in the back is let's say you call 911 and we're coming up and I pull the truck up to the front of the house and I don't see anybody. What do you think I'm gonna think? You're still inside. So I'm gonna send a fire crew looking for you, okay? So always be up front, ready to meet uh, the fire crew right away, let them know where the fire is at. Is anybody still inside? If there is a child still inside, do we go back in? No. Fire doubles in size every uh, 15 to 30 seconds. The smoke triples the volume every three to five seconds. What kills people? Smoke. And smoke's not like what you see in the movies and TVs. You can't see your hand in front of your face. There's that thick black smoke. Mm. So the chance, you might be the only one to know that there's still somebody inside. And now you left all these other kids alone. You need to be on the phone right away with us, with 911, letting us know where the fire's at or if somebody's still inside. Let us know where, where's the last place you saw that child or that person. That's, a, that's our number one priority once we arrive is to get that child. Once we get that information, once you tell 911, they tell us right away, we're gonna start calling you more fire crews right away to get that. But if you don't tell us or you go back in, something happens to you, we don't know. So that information is crucial, okay? 
So I want you up front to let us know right away if someone's missing. That makes sense to everybody. Meeting place. Yes, ma'am. How many smoke alarms do you have to have? Good question. How many smoke alarms? You need one on every level of your home. So basement, first floor, second floor, um, and if you had a third floor, but we don't allow child care on third floors. So only first and second. And wherever a child would sleep. So if you have a child sleeping in one room, that needs to be with the interconnected. I would recommend for your own family, every bedroom have them in every level of your home. But for child care regulations, wherever a child sleeps. So if a basement has like a large room, it's two bedrooms, so it has to be Alarms. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, wherever a child would sleep. Correct. Uh, any questions on that? Okay, one of the things also is your address. When you go home, make sure that your address is posted visibly from the street. Make sure the trees, limbs that aren't covering it, or if someone's painted over your address and it's the same color. It needs to be a different color than the house, obviously, but we want to be able to see that right away. So just when you go home, make sure your, your address is posted. We want to make sure that all escape paths are clear. So, you know, you're running a child care. Kids are playing with toys. We understand that. But we don't want clutter up against the stairs or an exit block. That's, that, that's kind of a big thing. Make sure all your exits are clear and I have a clear path so no one can stumble and trip. Because if the little kid stumbles and trips, the big kid's not going to wait for him to get back up. He's going to go over him. So we want to make sure that's clear and unobstructed. We want to make sure your exit, your doors, they have a special type of lock called a quarter turn lock. We don't want a key lock from the inside. Does anybody have a key like that, a lock? Why do I not want a key lock, deadbolt key lock inside? You gotta get the key. Right, you have to find the key. And if there's fire or you see smoke and flames, trying to find that key is gonna be hard. Or what if that key's left in the lock and it gets broke off? So it needs to be a quarter turn lock. We make sure it's easily accessible, opened up um, from the inside without any keys or special knowledge. So that, um, also your um, fire drill records, once a month, we kind of talked a little bit about that, they have to be posted, publicly visible, not in the cabinet, not in the closet, right there where every parent and everyone can see it. Once a month, we want you to do your fire drills. And like I said, vary it up. One month I want you, you know, use primary. Next month, use your secondary exit. We will witness those fire drills and make sure you document that fire department witnessed it. We'll do that too. We'll witness that. If you do use your second floor, main floor, and basement, what we will do is put a child on your second floor, on your main floor, and on your basement, and hit the alarm. If you can't make it within four minutes, you're no longer using the second floor. That makes sense to everybody. Because you have to think of it. If you have kids on all three of those floors, at some point you have to pass by the fire, don't you? It just won't work. So we're going to witness it. If you can't make it within the four minutes, we'll start limiting your, your use of your home. Okay? So, and we will help train you on that. But that's because it's so important, we want to make sure everyone understands that. A barrier from your water heater and furnace, you want to make sure that you have a door or some type of gate so a kid can't run up and grab that. Because um, they're hot, so you want some type of barrier. Fireplaces, same thing. Some type of barrier. Um, hopefully you're not using your fireplace during child care, but if you are, Make sure there's some type of approved barrier. And, yes, sir. Can glass doors work as a barrier? Glass doors will work. Then I also want something else because that glass is going to get hot. So I want some other type of barrier, like a baby gate. So I call them a corral. It's probably not the correct word to use for childcare, but uh, <laughs> uh, a gate, some type of barrier. The kid can't run out to grab that. Um, see, next thing is the fire life safety agreement. And then you can get this from the Kansas State Fire Marshal's Office website. It, it's an agreement that you sign and date saying that you will follow all the rules. And it has to be posted with your fire drills. Tornado drills April through September. Yes, ma'am. Yes. It should be in your handbook. It's with your agenda. The agenda where the agenda is. Behind the agenda, the agenda on the first page. And, and I can also pass this one around too, make sure it's a new checklist. Uh, but in Fire Life Safety Agreement, you can have that, make sure it's posted on that as well. Tornado drills April through September. With your tornado drills, I'm not worried about time. You're not time dogging. But I want to make sure 
when you're down in the basement, I want to know where you're putting these kids. Do I want them right here in the middle of your basement? No. So your home's going to shift in a tornado and it will collapse. <coughs> They'll do what's called a pancake. One side will come down, then the next. If this is your basement, your corners, two concrete walls is your most secure area. I want you in that corner. If it's going to collapse, it's going to come down. This could be called what's called a void spot. So I want you in a corner, if at all possible. If not, then at least underneath your staircase where you have some structural integrity to be able to help secure it. Um, make sure you be cautious around the, your gas appliances and your electrical panel. Because if your home shifts, you could create a gas leak you know, or some type of spark from your electrical panel. So make sure you're, you're aware of where they're at. If you're on a main floor, you do not have a basement, then the most center part of your home, like a, a bathroom, where your centermost area of your home is good, is, is where we want you. Because I'm worried about debris coming through walls. The more wall between you and that tornado, the better. So it's stay center, center located. Make sure you have some type of survival um, supplies, like water, food. That's not a requirement, it's just a good idea. How many here thinks if a tornado strikes Johnson County, you're going to get a fire truck right away? <laughs> it might be days. You might get firefighters on foot. And that's how we train. Because I can't drive a fire truck if we have any fire trucks left in our city. I'm going to have to wait for other cities to come here and they, our roads are blocked. So we have to get public works out to clear roads, make sure there's nobody underneath the debris. It's a very slow process. So make sure you're able for at least 72 hours to take care of yourself. Churches or at schools, hospitals, nursing homes, child care centers, and home daycares are our top five priorities. Top five priorities. We will get to you, but you have to be able to be somewhat self-sufficient for 72 hours. Does that make sense to everybody? Good. And let's see here. In closing, you're, uh, you need to have a fire drill map or a fire escape map with your written procedures, what you're going to do in case of fire. Show me in, in writing and then also a map. And you're not graded on your artistic ability. I don't care if it's done in crayon. Just show me a layout of your home where you're going to go primary and secondary exits for out of that room, out of every room. And also separate, for a tornado, the same thing. You show me the same blue where you're gonna go for a tornado and your written procedures on that. That's something that we go over every year. Um, your procedures, make sure if, has anything changed, do you wanna change anything, call your fire marshal, your fire inspector. If you wanna change something up, we're here to help you. We'll definitely help. Yes, ma'am. If, I mean, is that something we need to have in place before you guys come, or can you come and tell us this is where I want you to go in a fire drill, and then we can write the procedure? We'd like to have it done beforehand, so if you want to call us, okay. we will be more than happy. But, um, you know, if you call up and say, hey, I'm not sure, we'll definitely help with you. And as long as you you're get it, we're okay with that. We're okay with that. Some cities require a business license. How many, is anybody here from Shawnee? Okay, great. We require a business license. Because like I said in the beginning, you're not babysitters. You're running a professional business. So some cities require that you purchase a uh, city license, business license. So check with your uh, local city that you're with and see if they require that. Um, your license, your state license needs to be posted next to, let's say your city business license. Any other type of licensing has to be posted um, visible to anybody. <coughs> Bathroom doors, make sure that if they lock, you have a key to it. You'd be surprised how many times we really do get a call for a kid locking himself in a bathroom. And we're not exactly the most gentle when we force that door open. So make sure you have a key, some, some way to get that out, that, that child out. Any questions? This, this handbook we're really proud of. You won't find this in many other counties. We're all fire departments within that county got together and worked on something. We're really proud of this. One other big part of this, we're working on a two-hour uh, teaching program that we'll uh, uh, give to you here at uh, some point in the near future. A big part of that is juvenile fire setters. Juvenile fire setters are 90% of the arson cases in the United States. They're big. Big problem. One other thing we did in the county, we got together and joined the Johnson County Youth Fire Invention Team. This is where all the fire marshals and public educators in the fire departments in the county come together and we worked on a, a plan, a program, and standardized it for juvenile fire setters. We worked with a lot of different agencies, NFPA, the health department, a lot of different people to work to, to get the program together. 
So now, if you if we have a child that's setting a fire in Shawnee, they're getting the same services as they would in o Overland Park, Olathe, Leewood. We've all got the same services. If you see a child with matches in their pocket, lighters, or you start seeing burned items in a trash can, call us. What we do, we're here to help the child and the parent, to help educate them on the dangers of, of what that could happen. That child sets a fire, we have to respond. And that happens to us, to a firefighter, if they get in an accident, hurt somebody, it goes back to whoever set that fire. So we don't want to get hurt, we don't want the family hurt, we'd rather address it right away and help educate on that. And it's not tattling, or anything. I don't want to get anybody in trouble, we're here to help. You're doing the right thing by letting us know right away. One thing that you can have, and I recommend that, I know I only have 15 minutes, I'm on 45 minutes now, but, um, <laughs> BIC, and we don't, we don't promote anybody, the BIC lighters actually has a pretty good program. It's the uh, Play Safe, Be Safe. So in your, in your child care, when you do your teachings, October is Fire Prevention Week. So I'd really like to see you kind of incorporate some of the uh, fire safety programs. There's a lot of great websites. If you get on your fire department's websites in most of your cities, there's some good handouts, some good ideas. But this, this book has Still, I don't know if anybody still has one. <laughs> you do, you're set. But they have flashcards. You know, they ask the child, what do you see in this picture? What do you think they're doing? And there's other cards too, like, um, where's your meeting place at? Where's their meeting place at? So you can get something to think. Some uh, playing cards that have, you know, like a glove, baseball glove. that says that's a toy, but then it shows a match with a circle and a line through it saying that's not a toy. So it helps the people, the kids to realize. Every child's gonna have curiosity about fires. Sometimes kids set fires and that's an underlying problem. Something at home or some type of internal issue. Who knows more about fires? You or me? Call us. We'll help, definitely help, definitely help. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of great information here. Uh, coloring books, get a hold of us. We'll definitely come out and, and help give you some materials if you want to put on a class or we'll help you uh, put on a class for your child care. Anybody have any questions? All right, well, I appreciate your time. Thank you guys very much. <laughs>